Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I had a little bit of a problem with the stream, the live stream. I'm going to fix this camera real quick uh, for YouTube Live. So welcome to uh, this live stream. Uh, I'm kind of replacing my weekly pre-recorded video for a live stream. Uh, so typically every Thursday I drop a brand new video on podcasting. Uh, this week is a little bit different because um, I just want to try the live stream and, of course, uh, share a little bit of information with you. So uh, once again, thank you and welcome. My name is Shanna Hernandez. I'm a radio broadcaster, podcaster, and podcast producer. And today's video, we're talking all about um, how to use, I guess, a Periscope for podcasting and whether or not you can use it for podcasting. Uh, just last week, uh, Twitter and Periscope came out with a brand new function for the Periscope app. And that application gives you the functionality to record live audio. Now, um, there have been plenty of people who have come in and they have uh, in podcast saying, you know, could you use this for podcasting? Yes and no. Um, when I look at Periscope and I look at whether or not it can be used for podcasting, it really has this, I guess, function of anchor um, without the social aspect. I guess it does have some form of a social aspect to it, but I don't believe that it, it is on the same level as anchor. It's something that is completely different. It's just a little bit different. So I think it's important for you as a podcaster to understand that if you're going to use something like free podcast hosting, or I wouldn't even say it's called podcast hosting, but something that will stream live audio, you have to understand that the quality is probably going to be a little bit lower and you're doing it in a live format and doing something in a live format is a little more difficult to do when it comes down to performing live. I mean, this is like this video right here is very live. Uh, I'm used to speaking on live radio, so uh, I'm, I'm used to being able to kind of go on and on and on without missing a beat. And for a lot of people, that's that's something that's a little difficult. But uh, with the functionality of Periscope, uh, the question has been asked, can you use it for podcasting? And straight off the bat, I'm going to say yes, and no, because yes, you can use it as a means to upload audio later down the line to your RSS feed, but it is not, I would say, a replacement for podcasting. We have to understand that there are many different ways we can podcast, many different ways we can utilize podcasting, and podcasting can be done you know, in a storytelling format where there's a lot more editing that's being taken place there. Podcasting can be done in <clears throat> podcasting can be done in a format in which um, you can do it like live radio, and you're just doing an interview and you're talking between two people, very similar to like what you see with Joe Rogan, and it's just kind of all one stream that's going on all together. But when it comes down to the Periscope app and using Periscope, Periscope really is I testing water with how they can introduce audio. Not everyone wants to always be on camera. <clears throat> and I understand that is an issue for a lot of people. In fact, I take a survey that is on my website uh, when people join my email newsletter list. I ask them if they're comfortable with talking in front of a camera. And most people say no, they don't like talking in front of a camera. The camera frightens them. And, and typical reasons why they don't like talking in front of a camera is because they don't like the way they look or they don't like the way the room looks, um, they have these fears about certain aspects of the look behind the camera. And that really shouldn't be something that is, I think, an issue. In fact, to me, it's more of a non-issue. That's a self-confidence thing that you have to get over for, your, for yourself. But I certainly understand that people will want to use audio. So should you use, now I'm going to ask this question again, should you use the Periscope app? Well, I haven't used Periscope a lot in, say, a good two to three years, especially since a Periscope had launched um, and then Facebook Live came out. And then, of course, uh, everything was taken over by Facebook. And you really just can't deny Facebook at all. And Facebook really kind of tested this out already with an audio function. And I tried it a couple of times and I used it on my Facebook page. and. Was it good? It was cool, but you didn't have pre-planned content. It was just someone rambling on and on. 
So what you do with so so using this with Periscope, I think it's going to be very much used in a similar fashion as to how Facebook was using it. And I don't think it's going to last very long because Facebook has already gotten rid of the audio function within Facebook. You can't broadcast straight audio. And I know that whenever you broadcast a straight audio inside of Facebook, that it really overheated your phone. Um, the connection was not that clear. And it was difficult for people to, I guess, just broadcast altogether. And my phone would freeze. A lot of people were like, where are you? What's, what's going on? And it just wasn't something that I think was very useful. Now, because Periscope is on Twitter, and because when you launch any type of Periscope, it feeds directly into your Twitter stream. There's a couple of things that you need to think about when it comes to using Periscope. Number one, you have to think about, do you have an audience on Twitter? Because if you're going to create a podcast or some type of Periscope audio cast and feed it out into... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is my audio a little distorted? Oh, sorry. I don't know what's going on there. Maybe it's my microphone. Either way, I'm going to keep going. But uh, if you're going to feed that out into the Twitter stream, you have to have an audience. Then that audience needs to be uh, engaged in some, some sense. So with that being said, have you built an audience out on Periscope? That's one of the key things because people coming in and listening and watching are going to be the ones who are following you on Twitter, okay? So a couple of things that you can do with Periscope, though, if you are planning on using audio content for it, is that if you have a podcast and say you want to create some type of content that is that builds around the live portion of, I guess, um, the content creation process, you can definitely go live on Periscope and then kind of invite people in and let them know that they can listen to your podcast uh, in the next week, in the next couple days, either way, and give them kind of a sneak peek with, through audio. That's one way that you can use that. You can utilize Periscope audio for a Q&A session for people who want to ask questions specifically about your podcast, and drive traffic back to your podcast. Of course, ultimately, at the end of the day, you can create a live Periscope audio recording as a means to just build a straight community and building the community will help drive people back to your podcast, back to your website, back to whatever. Okay. That's just one way that you, or a couple of ways that you can do that. All right. Now to get people to listen to your Periscope on and on and on is really going to be dependent on the fact that you are going to need to keep a consistent schedule. Kind of, it's not, I'm, I don't keep a consistent schedule in terms of going live, like right here on, on YouTube Live. And thank you guys so much for who's here, uh, who is tuned in. But this is really just a test. And that's what I've done on Periscope. I've tested. And so what you're going to do, going, going, to, going to have to do with Periscope is keep a consistent schedule and go live at the same time every week. You know, So what I would recommend that you do is that you go live in the evenings sometimes. Uh, or go live early, early in the morning when people are getting ready for work. Doing live feed uh, typically within the middle of the day don't work. I'm doing this right now at 3 p.m. Uh, Arizona time, and I realize that there's some people still at work on the West Coast, but there are people on the East Coast who are just getting off work and making the commute back home. Or maybe they're just watching on their phone on the subway. It doesn't matter. Either way, I would commit to doing something maybe in that 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock hour if you're on the West Coast. And then if you're on the East Coast, doing it somewhere in the 8 o'clock hour. But keeping to a consistent schedule with Periscope. Now, you can certainly repurpose the content that you're using on Periscope and put it into your podcast. However, I, I, I just don't know if that's going to work. I don't know if that's going to work at all. You could use it as a feature, I would suppose. But using it as a viable podcast platform i don't think is going to be something that you can use it for you're still going to have to buy hosting you're still going to have to upload you're going to have to go down through that trial uh by fire 
by learning the steps of podcasting. Podcasting isn't easy to set up, and I think that it should be set up to be a little more easy. That's why you see things like um, like Anchor, people using Anchor. Uh, but the my downfall, and I, I'll always say this, my downfall or uh, the de- Anchor's downfall I think, is the ability to give the podcaster access to the Apple account, the Google Play account, the Stitcher account, the Spotify account. I don't think you really need a Spotify account. You need to have a Lipson account in order to put your podcast up on, on Spotify. But they don't give you that access. And what if you are unhappy with Anchor service over time? And you want, you're like, I need to scale this. I need to know where my people are listening from. I need to know how, which episodes are the most popular. That's when you get to a lot of the strategy that goes into podcasting. Thank you so much for uh, joining me right now uh, in, a, in this live format of uh, podcasting, uh, me sharing podcasting with you. My name is Shannon Hernandez, and uh, I see that there is that comment right there from Gas Mask Gabe. I appreciate it. I don't know what's wrong with the uh, the audio. Like I said, starting this um, YouTube live is something that is brand new. Uh, I've done it in the past before, but I wanted to go ahead and just go live with it anyway, just to kind of test it out because I'm considering doing it i've said this in the past before i'm considering doing it over and over again so if you have questions you can go ahead and leave them in the chat on the right hand side i see uh, that there are some people here watching today now let's finish up the conversation about periscope and whether or not you can use it for podcasting i think that when it comes down to using periscope periscope is just another toy that can be played with it's another thing it's another bright shiny object that's off in the distance and it can certainly take away your attention from the goal of creating a podcast that's ultimately what i think is going to happen there unless you have the audience on twitter and on periscope to do that then i would yeah go with it one of the ways that I forgot to mention how you can get some traction to your Periscope is by creating a great title within the Periscope itself. So when you start up a brand new feed, you're going to see that there's a screen there and then there's going to be a microphone. You're going to want to tap that microphone. Once you tap that microphone, then that will go to the audio feed. But then when you type, whenever you type out the description, the key things that you want to do for your podcast is that you want to type the description with keywords or hashtag keywords that are maybe within your niche. That's how you get a lot of traction. When I first used Periscope back in the day when I was doing um, live video for the radio station, um, I remember having to strategically create a Periscope title that would go out into the Twitter feed so that when people saw that and they saw this live video and they saw this video going, um, you know, someone talking that they would actually click on the video and then it would take them into the Periscope app. And I was getting like 50 to a hundred people watching my Periscopes all at once. I would be playing the guitar, I'd be doing whatever these days, since Facebook kind of dominates the video live video game and no one's on Periscope, it's a lot harder to get people to, to come in. But what you can do is you can go in and research those trending topics inside of Twitter and then put those hashtags inside of the title and then send that feed out from periscope onto twitter that's just one one way that you can do that so let's get to some uh questions here so i see barrett soup is here thank you so much for joining barrett uh your comment here is you're the best man thanks so much for all the work you put into helping others you are very welcome uh do just what i can to help uh the podcaster who's looking to step up the podcast game to create the best podcast possible um I just recently launched a product for uh, podcasters that is called Badass Podcasting, where I teach you um, editing tips, uh, editing tips that will uh, save you at least four at least four hours of time. I can't say that it'll save you for at least four hours, but it saves me at least uh, four to five hours a week whenever I create a podcast. Um, and a friend of mine had told me that with a couple of the tips and tricks that I showed him, um, it saved his partner about four hours. So that uh, product was just recently launched, and I got some students in that uh, course here right now. Um, I'm, ho- I'm hoping to enroll more people within the, uh, the next couple of uh, months when enrollment starts up again. So um, my whole goal is to help 
podcasters become better at what they do to create a seamless program, create a seamless podcast. So uh, let me see. Let me ask some questions here. Uh, answer some questions. Uh, Gas Mask Gabe says, uh, oh, yeah, this is just a comment. Uh, yep, he's the best, uh, has best tips out of all of them. Let me see here. Yep, he is the best out of all the best tips. Shannon has the only one who actually talked about podcasting in more detail. Yeah, there are a lot of people who start podcast. They, they create videos in YouTube about podcasting, um, but they're running basically a YouTube channel that is based around creating content. It's all about creating content, and that's not a bad thing because YouTube is a great platform for you to go in and um, develop multiple pieces of content and get a, a large subscriber base. Now, the question that came, that always comes out when it comes down to um, should I put my podcast on YouTube? I would recommend that if you're going to do a podcast and put it on YouTube, that you do it kind of like the Joe Rogan style where it's two people talking and there's two cameras back and forth. But as far as putting like, a slate screen, like just a, a screen with your logo and then audio running on that. I, I don't recommend that you do that. That just does nothing. And plus, there are a lot of people that are out there who don't know how to use YouTube. YouTube is a very powerful platform. And if you don't know how to use YouTube, um, then it's just it's kind of a waste of time to put your podcast up there anyway. So I recommend that you understand, look up, uh, you know, videos on how to use YouTube. Uh, I'm considering on maybe doing this and be having it becoming a part of a, that training course of uh, badass podcasting, um, or but even maybe t putting some of those tips out here on YouTube just to get you started. All right, uh, Yeast, why? How are you? It's good to see. You. Where you know? While we're here, why don't you guys tell me where you are um, chatting from in the chat? Thank you so much for joining. Uh, tell me where you're chatting from and I'll give you a shout out on the chat right now. So let's add, let's see here. Can you have a good sounding podcast in your home with, a with multiple co-hosts? That's a really good question to ask. Um, I've got some videos on YouTube that talk about, um, I believe co-hosting and creating a good sound in your home, but I'll answer that question for you right now. That question is, um, yes, you can have a, a good sounding podcast in your home. Um, this room really that I'm in right here, this is my master bedroom only because this is the coldest room in my house and I'm uh, broadcasting live out of Phoenix, Arizona. And um, this is the only room that I can really broadcast out of that is that is actually tolerable for, you know, for temperature wise. Um, but it is not the best in terms of um sound quality. Um, I've got tile floors. Um, I do have in the other room, uh, uh, you know, a, a big, you know, a, a, some carpet in that room. Uh, you know, a big, you know, it's just a big area rug. And of course, uh, I don't have any sound treatments. So how you get across that whole idea of having a great sounding podcast in your home with a co-host? Yes, you can do that. Um, you may have to sound treat your walls. Um, that means you may have to go and get like a uh, sound treatment for your walls. That can be a little bit expensive, but I have a video on YouTube that talks about, you know, kind of some DIY ways to do that. Um, so go ahead and, uh, check that video out. Um, you know, I, I have shoot, just look up soundproofing Shannon Hernandez on in YouTube and you'll, that video should pop up. Okay. So that's a very good question. Um, with multiple co-hosts, that's another, let me kind of answer that in a second part. Okay. When you have multiple co-hosts and you're using, say a Yamaha MG 10 XU mixing board, um, something that you have to remember and sorry about that. There's a gnat right here. Something you have to remember is that when you're putting multiple inputs into your mixing board, that's drawing more power from the microphones. And of course you're picking up more area sound within the room. This is something that is common, not just within mixing boards, but it's very common within the radio station. So at my radio station, there's, of course, the main host mic, uh, main host microphone. And then on the other side are uh, one, two, three, four, five other microphones. And every morning when the morning show comes in, they turn those microphones up. And of course, you can hear the background noise. Uh, this is actually a topic of conversation that we had had last week when I was filling in for days last week uh, for my uh, my coworker. And we were talking about how people freak out a lot about this background noise that pops in. You have to remember that podcasting, if you're doing the type of podcasting that I am teaching, which is like live radio, it is, um, uh, you know, there, there's room for mistake. There's, there's room to just, you know, be yourself. Podcasting is not creating an audio book. Um, podcasting is not creating a music uh, album. Podcasting is like doing live radio. Now, that's only how you, that's, it depends on how you look at podcasting. Podcasting can also be 
storytelling podcasting. Now that will have some type of quality that goes behind it, editing quality. And there's a lot more editing that goes into storytelling podcasts because it has to sound very seamless across the way. But that doesn't mean that a podcast as done, done like live radio doesn't mean that that can't be as seamless. There's just room for the uhs and the ums and all that. Don't worry about the ums and uhs. That will take you way too much time to edit out, okay? But as far as that background noise and all that stuff, you're just going to want to get sound treatment, and you'll just have to find that that sweet spot within your mixing board to get the right sound out of your mixing board, okay? Great question, and I know that there will uh, there will be uh, more there. there. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm over here looking at two videos. I'm looking at your questions, and I'm trying to answer at the same time. I clearly can't do that. Uh, let's see here. Will there be more episodes created on your podcast? Yes, there will be. I have some uh, banked episodes that I have not gotten to. Uh, the reason why I haven't released new episodes yet is because I've been building out this training course for people uh, to come in and uh, help build their own podcast. My website, there's a lot that goes on in the back end, and it's just me. Um, and I just, uh, it, it's just a lot. I mean, I don't get paid for this. In fact, I just recently um, uh, started up a, a Patreon. So, um, you know, for all the content that I will provide, um, I will you know, put that offer out to people uh, if they want to donate just a little bit to see that this content continues to build out. So I'll let you know uh, whether that, whether or not that, uh, well, not whether or not, because that will happen. I will let you know when that comes uh, to fruition. Okay. But make sure you jump on my, uh, my email list. Uh, just go to the shaman.com. That will be in the description down uh, in this video below. If you're watching this after the replay okay, or after the live video. Okay. Um, you're from the East. You're from the East. Uh, Pocono, Pennsylvania. Oh, that's ah, oh, there's my boy. <laughs> there's my boy. Let's see. Uh, Monrovia, California. I'm not familiar with Monrovia. Uh, where is that by Monrovia? Uh, another question. What's cheaper, renting out a studio room or an office space to do a podcast? You're out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, what's cheaper? Uh, I would say don't even rent out a studio and I wouldn't rent, even rent out any space. I would just do it out of your home. Um, that is the best way to do your podcast. Um, that is the best way to, uh, I would say, look at it this way at the radio station. We have like 12 studios, maybe 15 studios, something like that. I, maybe less. I can't remember. Got a lot of studios is all I know. And we do rent out some of those studios. And this is actually a good question for maybe another live feed that I do. And how that works when it comes down to using our studio is that our salespeople, salespeople build in a plan, a package plan, where people can come in and they can broadcast all they want. Sports programs can come in and pro bo uh, broadcast all they want. Um, you know, yoga programs can come in and broadcast all they want. It's also limited on space too, but they will also charge you an arm and a leg every week to use the studio. I don't know what the cost of that might be, but I do know that it's not cheap. Let's just throw a number out. I know it's more than $300 a week. Okay. Could be more per month. So what is way better for you to go in, purchase equipment that is far more affordable than going and using a radio studio. The reason why it costs a lot of money to use a radio studio is because of all the equipment that goes into it and the transmitter site and the licenses, all that stuff that goes into it. That's why they're charging a lot. I mean, they're a business. You're a podcaster. So what I recommend that you do is you go down and you get the equipment that is in my essential equipment guide. And that is the best equipment that you can use to start your podcast. I remember getting my equipment for the first time and um, I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to cost me like five, $600, but that was it. It was a one-time purchase. I still have the same mixing board that I did seven years ago. It's an analog version of the MGX10, MG10XU uh, Yamaha mixing board and uh, the new ones are better. Okay. So I recommend that you do that. Uh, so you're out of, you're near Pasadena. Oh, okay. Near pa I was near Pasadena about a year and a half. Was it a year and a half ago? A year ago? Something like that. Uh, Mac garage band PC audacity or Adobe audition. This is a really good question. Really good question. And if you have questions and you're just joining, leave them in the chat below. I will go ahead and answer them for you. 
The answer to this depends on how much time you want to save. I've always used Adobe Audition. I've used, I used Adobe Audition when it was Cool Edit Pro. And it has saved me so much time in the process of creating any type of audio. Now, this all depends on your process of how you use each audio editing program. But I will say this, that when you use Adobe Audition, for me, spending the extra $20 a month to use Adobe Audition because I've already learned how to use Adobe Audition is well worth the time spent looking for guests, creating YouTube lives, going on Facebook Live, interacting with the audience that is within my radio audience. But you have to understand and learn Adobe Audition before you can actually use it. So should you use Audacity or GarageBand? I say, yeah, go ahead and use them. But they will not have a lot of the shortcuts that Adobe Audition has. You can go in and do a lot of the same things in uh, GarageBand and Audacity, but it takes more time. And what takes Adobe Audition about 30 seconds could take Audacity a minute two minutes, three minutes to do. And once you add all those minutes up, then it takes, it, then it's just like, oh man, I, I, it takes too much time to edit. This is one of the things that I see a lot in Facebook groups. I stay, I kind of, I kind of lurk in the background of Facebook groups when I look at a lot of these people who are editing their podcasts and they struggle with editing so much. And it's frustrating for me to see like, why are you taking all this time to edit your podcast that way? It shouldn't take that much time. Use the shortcuts. If you're going to use the shortcuts, it's well worth the money to spend for Adobe Audition $20 a month. There's always going to be a cost that goes with creating any type of content. So understand that Adobe Audition does this. My badass podcasting training teaches you all the, it teaches, teaches you my method of how to create a podcast and save yourself four hours a week in creating podcasts. I teach you every method that I've learned over my 18 years. Let's see. Uh, question. In doing your podcast, does the size of the room matter? Are bigger, are bigger or smaller spaces better? That's an interesting question because it varies. If you look at a studio like Howard Stern's studio, he's got a massive studio. But it all depends on the sound treatment that was it is when with, within the room. Are there... Are there certain panels or the sound treatment panels that are in the room that make the sound better? I think sound is kind of like uh, sound is an important thing. But as far as like worrying about the size of the room, you shouldn't have to worry about the size. What you have to worry about is whether or not the room is treated or not. That's the most important thing. Is the room treated or not or not? Whether or not you have microphones that are like this particular Blue Yeti microphone. I've had this microphone for years. Okay. And for this particular microphone, you can have it omnidirectional, you can have it cardioid, you can have it, uh, you know, in stereo, you can have it in multiple different ways, okay? And it just really all depends on the setting of the microphone too, what's being picked up. That all depends on the treatment in the room. So the size, I think, of the room isn't going to matter. A whole lot. Now, if you're a voiceover artist, yes, size does matter. <laughs> size does matter with a, a voiceover artist, okay? Because they have to go into a little booth. All right. That's what's been very important there. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Todd Bicraft, uh, it's good to see you. Uh, if you're using the Blue Yeti microphone, which, which only allows one set of headphones, leaving your guests without a set of headphones, this will throw the sound off. Uh, let me see. Let me reread that again. I'm sorry. If you are using the Blue Yeti microphone, which only allows one set of headphones, leaving your guest without a set of headphones, will this throw the sound off to the host or the guest? This is going to be up to the guest. I'm sorry, to the host and how you want the sound to come out. The hardest part about doing, let me kind of give you some context about what I'm talking about here. Okay. Because I'm recording live on YouTube. I don't see waveforms being recorded. Typically, I should probably be recording this on Adobe Audition to kind of monitor myself. I didn't think about that until now. So thank you. So it's really hard for me to monitor and see like whether or not there's too much distortion if I'm if I'm too close to the microphone, you know, things like that. 
So if you're using this particular microphone, this blue Yeti, which is the USB version for your podcast, the only time that I would recommend that you ever use this blue, day, blue Yeti USB microphone would be for Skype calls um, and any type of like remote call or just doing some type of voiceover recording. If you're going to do a podcast with hosts, you have to buy equipment. That's just the way it's going to be. You need to buy equipment if you're going to do it with co-hosts and you're, they're going to come in the same room with you, okay? But if you're going to do a podcast where it's remote, you can use something like Google Hangouts or Zoom and record your podcast that way. It's not going to come out as clear, but it will come out either way. It'll come out somewhat decent, okay? You just have to understand that your guest is always, your guest is always going to be like this. I'm get, Okay, so here I am. I'm the podcast host. I'm speaking in front of the microphone. Typically, I would probably be telling you sit up straight and, and speak, but because I don't have my stand and this is the coolest room in the house and all my equipment's in the other room, I'm having to lean in. All right. So the host is typically speaking closer to the microphone. They have the best sound. When you get a guest in the studio, I guarantee you this every time, every week when I go in and I record for one of my clients, the guests come in and they get in front of the microphone and they're always like this. And I'm always having to say, come closer, come closer. And so they come closer and they get like this and then they always back away. You'll notice that when your guests speak, they'll speak into the microphone and then they pull away and they continue to pull away and they'll always pull away. You as a podcaster always have to say, you need to pull it in, pull it in. Doesn't matter if it's live. You say, hey, can you get closer to that microphone? It does not matter if they're live. Your sound is what's important. Your podcast is what sounds important, okay? So pull them in closer. I hope that helps, Todd. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to answer a couple more questions, and then I'm going to jump off. I didn't expect this to, to go <laughs> this long, actually. You guys are great uh, for showing up. I appreciate it. This, you guys are the loyal few. The loyal few. Uh, can you use some tips? Uh, on setting up the mixing board properly, especially with compression, gain, et cetera. Um, okay, so I don't know which board you are using. Um, I've seen, let me see here. I'm going to look something up on the internet real quick. But I've seen the, uh, there's just different types of compression. The compression that you're going to want to use eventually down the line is going to be in post-production. Okay. I've got a video on this inside of YouTube and I believe it is called, um, how, oh, there it is. How to make your, how to make your blue Yeti sound great or something like that. Let me see here. Uh, I can't find it. I, you just got to find it's, it's called how to make your blue Yeti microphone sound really great or something like that. Okay. So, Make sure you look up that video because that gives you a tip inside of Adobe Audition that I use constantly for every one of my podcasts that levels out the compression and the audio waveforms within your audio. Now, whenever you are, you're, you're getting like a, a guest on Skype. This is a good topic to talk about. But when you get a guest on Skype, typically what happens when you get someone on Skype is that they're using, they're using this right here. They're using the, the microphone on the... Uh, on the webcam, right? And that microphone really isn't all that great, right? It's just, it's kind of sucks. And so you're not getting the best quality sound. So what I always recommend that people do, unless you're getting an international caller, what I always recommend that you do is you get a Skype call number, a Skype phone number. And then what happens is that if you have that USB board that's connected into your laptop or your desktop or whatever, you can pull that sound in now using the new Skype, brand new Skype, okay? Then you can go in, then you can adjust the mids, the highs, and the lows to make that sound great. Now, you can also adjust the volumes a little bit too. And I think I've got a video on this on YouTube too, where I talk about how to set up a Skype call. Once you do that, once you get that call I guess, recorded as raw. Once you've got your levels on your microphone set right, and once you've got your levels on your phone call set right, then you can go in in post-production and run a process, one simple process in Adobe Audition that will make everything come out even. It will make that waveform come out even. It will pull, the, it will pull all the more quieter parts of your audio 
up to the right decibel level and it will compress and smash down the louder parts, which would probably be your microphone and it'll make everything sound even. So that's what I recommend that you do. You go in and look at that video and I show you exactly how to do that. I run that on every process when I go in and create a podcast. So, um, I hope that helps. I mean, uh, is there something in particular that you want me to answer George, uh, when it comes down to, uh, that, I mean, the compressions that you're going to be using on your, on your board, you're going to have to find that sweet spot within the board. I know that on the Yamaha MG 10 XU, you have compression that is, that goes in there and then you have certain gains and you want to make sure that whenever you're recording directly into your Adobe audition or whatever DAW that you're using, that your audio for both your guest or your co-host or you always is around negative three decibels, negative three decibels. All right. Once you run the process, which is called smash dynamics, then what will that will do? It will, it will run a di- bunch of different processes. So basically what happens in Adobe audition, you can go in and you can manually go in and create a normalization on your audio. You can create uh, compression, you can create different equalization, you can create different sound effects and filters. But within Adobe Audition, that particular that particular setting is called Smashed Dynamics. And I run that on all my processes, okay, or on all my audio. And it basically combines all of those processes that you do together, okay? So uh, I hope that that helps out. So if you're watching right now, go ahead, leave this video a thumbs up on the uh, channel page. I really appreciate it. And share it out with your friends out on Twitter. I didn't expect to be on here more than 10 minutes. And in fact, I sent an email out to my email list saying, hey, I'm going live on YouTube. Uh, come join me. And when I went live, the video uh, wasn't starting up. And so I had to restart a whole new feed. And I thought, well, I just, you know, you live and you learn. And that's just kind of how podcasting is. You kind of live and learn. You'll make mistakes. You'll go through and you have to fix those mistakes later on down the line. And uh, there's no better way to to learn how to do something than to make the mistakes. So I hope this video has been very helpful. Leave it a thumbs up. I appreciate it and share it with your friends. Um, you guys have been great. Um, the the loyal few, you guys are the loyal few. In fact, I'm, I'm going to leave a, I'm going to leave you guys uh, the hands up in emoji. If I can find the hands up emoji in here. Oh, where is it? Here's the hands up emoji or the high five emoji. And I want to thank you guys. Uh, so is this the high five emoji right here? There we go. There's a high five emoji. Thank you, guys. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining. Um, is this something that you would like to see me do every week as opposed to doing a pre-recorded video? Um, you know, you can still leave the comments in the section over here on the chat to let me know. Uh, if you're watching this on replay, I would still love to know whether or not you think this is something that I should do. I have thought about doing this um, in the past. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to come up with questions or topics to talk about today was particularly with Periscope. So, um, I hope this really helps out. Okay. Uh, just let me know, uh, in the comments. Uh, I see you, George have said yes. Um, so there's one vote for yes, and maybe we'll make it a consistent habit, uh, because I like to, uh, practice what I preach when it comes down to this stuff. All right. So in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your Wednesday. I appreciate you guys watching. And um, if there is some other piece of or some other topic that you would love me to talk, love to have me talk about, this can be podcasting. This can be uh, digital marketing because with podcasting comes a lot of the digital marketing stuff. You're going to have to learn that digital marketing stuff. There's a whole wheel of information that we have to talk about when it comes down to not just creating the podcast, but getting it out there into the ears of people. And so uh, I have been slacking myself on doing a lot of this stuff for my own YouTube channel. But as you have seen, I have grown the YouTube channel as well. So um, I, I can help teach you guys a lot of that stuff too. And be on the lookout for Patreon if you want to uh, donate uh, to help keep these videos rolling. So in the meantime, thank you guys so much. Enjoy your Wednesday. I've got to get to the gym because I have not done my workout today. And I hope that you guys probably uh, have a great rest of your evening. And I'll talk to you next time. See ya.